Well, hello, my friends, we meet again. It's been a while, where should we begin? I recently made a community post about a week ago asking you guys about the best metal covers of songs. You know, you should go check out that post as well as there's a ton of great music and covers posted there. But as I was listening through the songs you guys posted, it really got me thinking, you know, what are the best metal covers of metal songs? i.e. metal bands covering other metal bands material. The best metal on action, so to speak, I guess you could say. And uh, sorry about the beard here, it's uh, playoffs. I'm not shaving my beard, it's a playoff beard. You know, I'm not gonna be the reason why the Oilers lose this year. Whether it's a legendary track getting a fresh spin or a brutal anthem being reimagined, these covers showcase the creativity and raw talent within the metal community. I will probably do the best metal covers of pop songs later on, but uh, this question really had me racking my brain for the best ones that I know of, and of course this is no means an exhaustive list, just my personal favorites, so be sure to leave your favorite metal covers of other metal songs down in the comments. Remember to hit that like and sub button, check out my Patreon and my merch, and without further ado, let's get on to the list. Starting off with a song that frequent viewers of my channel probably would have already guessed I would include it in this list, and that is Death covering Judas Priest's Painkiller. Appearing as the last song on the amazing album, The Sound of Perseverance, which we'll be getting a multi-hour deep dive on soon, this is technically the last Death song to ever appear in their discography. Death's version of Painkiller is more or less a faithful cover of it, and despite being played two steps down due to the D standard tuning Death used, it remains very faithful to the original. This version, while lacking in some of the more crazy dive bombs and the guitar tone is a little bit less metallic sounding, it definitely lives up to the standard of the original and in some cases really exceeds it in my opinion. The real star of the show here on this track is Chuck Schuldiner's vocals. <laughs> and here in the last death song we see the first and only clean, and I do use that clean term very loosely here, vocals on an official death release. And man, the vocals are actually insane. Chuck has a legitimately great falsetto high scream, and hearing this song, it really makes me sad to think what he could have done in the future with his vocal style. And not only is his falsetto very good, but his harsh vocal technique sort of creeps into the singing as well giving the vocals a much more aggressive edge to them than in the original. The last scream is especially impressive. This cover is a must listen in my opinion. Excellent stuff. The next cover on my list here is Killswitch Engage covering Dio's Holy Diver. Here we see a different take on covering a metal classic. Rather than the more straightforward, faithful approach that Death took, Killswitch Engage really takes the original song and puts their own unique twist on it. Not only is the song played in drop C, which is a lot different from the original standard tuning, but the band also completely changes some parts and makes Holy Diver, which of course is originally a traditional heavy metal song, into an absolute banger of a metalcore track. <laughs> The cover here is fantastic, Howard Jones is an amazing singer and his powerful voice does a great job paying homage to Ronnie James Dio and Adam D's riffs are always excellent, as usual. The band adds in some breakdowns and screams as well, a very welcome touch which makes this cover not only unique but a fresh and interesting reimagining of the song. It retains the fundamental aspects of the song, which are that opening guitar riff and the powerful vocal hooks, and expertly morphs them into the kill switch engage sound. No, I really love this cover, great stuff, no wonder got a music video, it's just excellent. And be sure to check this out, even if you aren't really a medical fan, I think it's worth your time. It's 
The American Neil traditional band Visigoth is next with their brilliant cover of Manila Road's classic Necropolis. Through the jungle by the river sticks, I've journeyed long and far this day, lurking shadows in the parapets. Through the jungle by the river sticks, I've journeyed long and far this day. This is about as straight up of a cover as someone can do. This sometimes can backfire on a band as if the cover does not offer anything new or better or more interesting performance, it just simply becomes redundant as why would you listen to that when you can just listen to the original. But here Visigoth really, really nails the cover, the faithful version of a cover. Manila Road's original version certainly is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. I really do like it, but it does suffer from being produced in the early 80s. Visigoth paid tribute to the original perfectly, and basically this is just what it would have sounded like if Manila Road recorded the song in 2015 rather than in 1983. <laughs> Great stuff, and the song also fits very neatly into the album as Visigoth put it in the middle of the album rather than the end, so it sort of fits in with the whole theme of the album. And a super slept on album from Visigoth, which is The Revenant King. Check it out. Great stuff. For the peace you had before the time of war, I have witnessed you. Between the Buried and Me is up next with their excellent, excellent cover of Metallica's Blackened. Blackened in the air, with And this may be a little bit unfair considering that this is from an entire album of covers, but here we essentially get a death metal reimagining of Blackened. And Blackened, you know, maybe I'll make a video on this later, but Blackened already contributes a lot to the melodic death metal sound already, right? So to hear it played in this style, it's excellent. BT Bam play this in C sharp standard tuning and with exclusively screened vocals. It really turns Blacken from the frantic thrash banger to really a melodic death metal epic song. And this was a course from the era of a much heavier and darker BT Bam. The guitar tone on this track is excellent and it really reminds me a lot of that early 90s Swedish death metal sound. It's just very gritty, it's excellent. And besides the vocals and guitars, the drums also add a lot of intensity, especially in the chorus where Blake Richardson adds some blast beats. Tommy's vocals are also excellent, his growl here is very good, and other than that, it's a pretty straightforward and faithful cover that uh, gives a lot to the song. Excellent stuff. And the next song here is a rare example of a band making a song less heavy. Here we have Sabaton's triumphant cover of Twilight of the Thunder God by Amon Amarth. You know, it's very interesting to hear a non-screaming band cover a song which originally only contained harsh vocals, as essentially they must find a way to come up with new, brand new vocal melodies which fit the cover of the song. So essentially you're rewriting parts of the song entirely and coming up with new stuff. And Sabaton really does a great job here. The song, which originally is a melodic death metal track, is reimagined in an epic, fast-paced power metal scorcher. It is a great cover, as not only does the band do a good job of making the song worthy to stand on its own, but it really fits in with the rest of the Sabaton catalog. And Yo Kim's voice is just excellent, and he's powerful. His baritone voice really works well with this type of music. <laughs> And, you know, it's just a truly, truly great cover from a band which, in my opinion, gets far too much hate. Great stuff from Sabaton here. I'm almost embarrassed to say that when I was a young teenager, I thought this was an original song for years. Here we have Children of Bodom's version of Slayer's Silent Scream.
And in my defense here, it wasn't until I got Slayer's South of Heaven album years later that I discovered that the Children of Bodom version was indeed a cover. But, you know, it is a really good cover. A really, really, really good one. They do a very, very good job of adapting the song to their melodic death metal style. <laughs> Especially with the added keyboard parts, you know, that opening stuff in the intro, the orchestra stabs, it really adds a lot to the song. And the solo section is also probably better than the original with the dueling guitars and keyboards. <laughs> Excellent stuff. Alexi Lejo's vocals fit very well. Man, yeah, it's just great. Please check this out if you haven't heard it. It's really worth your listen. Next, we have As I Lay Dying's frontman's side project. It's a Terminator themed project called Austrian Death Machine, covering Megadeth's Killing Is My Business. This cover does a great job of modernizing the original song. The production is much, much cleaner and heavier, but importantly, it retains the sort of cheese and tongue-in-cheek comedic touch that Megadeth and Dave Mustaine usually has, especially on Killing Is My Business. The small little tidbits of the Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation voice is pretty cool. Entertaining, you know, the riffs sound better and much heavier. Just a very solid cover all around from a very interesting and fun side project. Great stuff and great lifting fuel for sure. Business is good. Killing is my business. Bad business is the last cover is Opeth covering Alice in Chains, the song in question being Wood. Now Varbus, you exclaim, Alice in Chains isn't metal. Well, I think they are, and I will be addressing this very topic in a video very shortly, but you know, it's my video anyways, I can just put whatever I want. Make your own video if that's the case. Mikhail Ackenfeld does a great job at covering Lane Staley, which is no easy feat. His more softer, more melodic voice really works well. He doesn't really try to imitate Lane, which I think is a good thing. He just sings it in his own style. Opeth's version just oozes atmosphere, and it's interesting seeing them cover and play a much more straightforward song compared to their original material. And instead of singing a third chorus, the band instead chooses to put an extended guitar solo. A great choice, as not only is that third chorus in the original near untouchable vocally, but the guitar solo really helps to crescendo the song very nicely. Great stuff from Opeth here. And well, that's the list. Be sure to leave your recommendations down in the comments. Hit that like and sub button. Thanks everyone, got a lot more stuff coming. Make sure you check out my merch, my website, my Patreon, and so long and good night.